Hi, my name is Jordan Call, and today I'm going to walk through my final project and presentation for my architectural acoustics and studio design class for the Berkeley Masters of Music Production program. So the first thing I want to talk about are my studio goals and a summary of my program. So I have four main things that I hope to do in this studio. The first is freelance mastering. The second is self-recording and producing. Also, I have a YouTube channel, and so I want to be able to have a good space for shooting video and editing that video. Finally, I'd like to be able to record small ensembles, although that is a somewhat lower priority. So for mastering, it's very important to me that at my listening position, I have a very accurate response. For my self-producing, I'd like it to just be a quality sounding room, a reasonable RT60 time, something that's fun to play music in. I want to be able to reach and use all my instruments quickly. So for video production, I'd like it to be nice looking, uh, a nice backdrop that I'm going to be able to film videos like this with. And then for my ensemble recording goals, I'd like to be able to fit maybe three to five musicians. I'd like to have a somewhat of a vocal or a drum booth. I don't think it needs to be especially uh, isolated. An improvement on gobos, for instance. For some of the miscellaneous goals that I have, I want to be able to load gear in and out easily if possible. I want it to have sort of a certain minimal level of hangability. And then I'd like the vibe and the aesthetic to be something that inspires creativity and, and is interesting and, and exciting to work in. So I started with some initial designs here. I originally had thought that I would have a separate live and control room since that's how studios, you know, when you think about a professional studio, that's what you imagine. In the end, I actually decided that um, separating the live and the control room didn't really make a lot of sense because I wanted to be recording myself. And so it might make more sense to um, have everything on hand rather than be on the other side of the glass uh, and I also realized that the smaller the room, certainly there introduces lots of acoustic problems. So I thought, okay, well, if I have so much real estate, why don't I just combine them into one room and have a one pretty good room instead of two rooms with lots of problems? So my new design was very simple, um, just a wall mounted, sort of a, an angled wall here to mount monitors in, and then just a big space with a little bit of storage and a vocal booth. And uh, you can see this is my original SketchUp floor plan, um, which I mostly stuck with uh, throughout the course. It really met my needs well. So the first issue, of course, is isolation. So I wanted to have maybe an NC20 in terms of my isolation, but I only really need that at my best moments. I'm not looking to spend the money to have it be like that no matter what's happening outside. And because I know that isolation is by far the most expensive part of building a studio in most cases, I decided to try very hard to use site solutions and social solutions to achieve the noise criteria that uh, would be acceptable to me, rather than room within a room construction, for instance. So in terms of site, we're planning on uh, either buying or building in a quiet suburb uh, of Baltimore, give us a little space from our neighbors, and planning on putting the studio in the basement that would be detached from the rest of the house. Socially, I have the flexibility to generally work when I want to, so I can try to pick times that are uh, conducive both to sound escaping and sound coming in. And I've found that most of the program material that I do, most of what I record, is fairly reasonable. So for flanking path issues and other miscellaneous isolation things, I do want to have a ducted HVAC system, which I know can introduce a lot of sound problems. But I'm thinking that this was something that seemed maybe a little too above my pay grade to model, so I would work with a, an architect. We would employ large ducts so the velocity of the air is lower and the sound is therefore lower and insulate the ducts and, and all of that. And of course, decouple and distance, hopefully on the other side of the house, the condenser for the air conditioning system. Um, for doors and windows, I originally had thought I would have windows, but they were going to be the, I can't remember the name of them, those recessed windows. Um, wouldn't have gotten a lot of light, certainly no view. Uh, but definitely would allow sound in, and I thought, I don't think I need these. I think I'm not really worrying too much to do uh, special construction methods to achieve the NC that I'm hoping to have, but I would just sort of use sheetrock on stud and then concrete footings. For the ISO booth, I'm also planning on just using standard construction, saving so much money, um, and I just don't think that I'm going to need much more. I think I could get away with using gobos, and I think that having a sealed ISO booth, even if it's not really constructed to be um, totally isolated, is still going to be more than enough for my program needs. I'm also planning on having a layer of plywood underneath the sheetrock 
to act as a nailer and provide some marginal sound isolation. Okay, so let me show you the final design in floor plan view. Okay, so this is my floor plan of my final design. I went with dimensions of 25 feet along this axis, 19 feet along this axis, and 12 feet ceilings. That's my main studio area. Up here in the top right, this is a vocal booth, and in the top left, this is a little bit of storage um, and sort of functioning as something of a machine room as well. Down here on the bottom, this is just a corridor that would allow access and have stairs leading up to the house. So this is kind of what I had imagined this would look like from the outside, the ground level being here, this line, right around where this green line is. Stairs from the outside down into here, and then this basement section, this would be the studio section, and then up here would be the, the guest suite. So for a model of the specifics that I have in mind on the construction, I've just got um, half inch sheetrock, and then half inch plywood, nailer, and then I've got two by fours every 16 inches on center, and then this pink in here, this is just fiberglass insulation, and then the gray would be concrete footings. Over here I actually erased the plywood layer. I am thinking about using this wall into this machine room as something of just like a giant membrane absorber. In terms of low frequencies, I was able to plot out the different modes for my dimensions. Um, I tried to make the room large, as I said, to try to mitigate modal problems and also use proportions that would avoid too many modal issues. This is a mode chart for my room. My biggest one is going to be around 90 hertz, so I'm gonna have a special attention to um, low frequency absorption at around that area. Overall, this is a really nice set of proportions for this room. This is my AMROC site analysis of the room. And as you can see, the Benello modal distribution looks good. I'm within the bolt area. Everything looks pretty good. And this is that same analysis, but just on Rumi Q wizard. So one thing that I wondered was if I was gonna be at a null, since you can't really do as much about nulls as you can about peaks uh, for the modes at, at 90, since that's my worst mode. And um, so I did a little analysis and found with my listening position that I would in fact not be in a null, but I would be in a peak. So I would be able to hopefully absorb that and improve that. So my low frequency solutions, I'm going to have the good geometry. That's where it all starts. Um, I also plan to have full ceiling height corner base traps here. So these base traps are modeled on the RPG Modex traps, and I have them basically floor to ceiling. They should do a substantial amount of low frequency absorption. I have these on every corner here. I do have a ceiling cloud. So my ceiling cloud here consists of panels that are four inches thick and about 10 inches on average below the ceiling, and that should do a fairly substantial amount of low frequency absorption as well. As needed, I'm going to try to use Helmholtz resonators like this, um, these are variable resonators that I can use to really target. This is a membrane absorber. I've, these are sort of more just examples. Once I have the actual room, I'm gonna run tests and see what I need and put things of this nature in places like this until I have the kind of uh, acoustics that I need. In terms of this wall that I just described, I am able to potentially get a lot of very low frequency absorption by using this wall as a giant membrane absorber. And uh, Jonathan was able to send me the absorption coefficient chart for that, not something that I can model with the software that I have. I would want to have more isolation between the vocal booth section and the main room. Um, so I would leave the nailer plywood up there, but here I think I would leave it off in order to create more of an absorptive surface at lower frequencies. So in terms of the internal acoustics at mid and high frequencies, I used the Sabine calculator to put in a bunch of different absorption and diffusion surfaces until I was able to have about a 0 0.3, 0 0.4 second RT60 time generally across the board. I have wall panels. I already have eight of these that I've built myself. So I found that if I put 13 of these up, that that would help tame my sort of low, mids, and up. In building these, I used an Owens Corning mineral wool. I was able to get the exact specs from the manufacturer website. I plugged that into the acoustic modeler, got the absorption coefficients, and plugged that into the Sabine calculator. I did the same with the ceiling clouds. In addition to the wall panels and the ceiling clouds, I've got these corner base traps that'll do a fair amount in uh, mid and high frequencies. I added some rugs here under the listening position um, and under 
this futon and the drum kit over here. And I also have um, RPG Expo panels. Once I plugged all of that into my Sabine calculator, I was able to come up with the RT60 uh, that I was going for. In terms of diffusion and my back wall, I've got something that looks a lot like these RPG Skyline 2D omnidirectional primitive root diffusers. And in terms of early reflections elsewhere, I've also angled my ceiling cloud above the listening position. I've also created splayed panels here that should redirect the sound behind the listening position for early reflections. So this line here shows the reflection coming behind the listening position. Here, that one looks good. So in terms of my monitors, uh, I'm planning on using Focal Trio 11 BEs. They are supposed to pack a pretty good punch. I'm planning on putting these at ear height and putting them about six feet away from the listening position, which is between the manufacturer recommended guidelines. And I am putting them soffit mounted. I've modeled this false wall here uh, to create a soffit mount. I'm gonna eliminate sort of these front wall reflections, the ones behind the monitors, and also they will be permanent and I'll know that they're in the right spot and that they're tuned and that they're not gonna get moved around and they're not gonna fall. These are like 80 plus pounds. Adds a little bit of a feature to the space and gives me somewhere that I can kind of tuck my piano and this electronic drum kit so that those aren't causing early reflections when I'm doing critical listening with mastering. Um, but then I can roll the piano or the drums out or slide them out as needed when I'm when I'm tracking. I'm planning on having my trusty uh, Cali LP6s as sort of near fields that'll be on stands right behind the, uh, the desk. Now I did think about some alternatives for the layout. I could have had the mixing position facing into the room. I decided against that for several reasons. I didn't want to have to deal with more back wall issues. You know, being able to look over and kind of pretend I'm looking through the glass might be useful, but I can also just turn my chair around if I need to be able to see what's going on behind me as I'm in the cockpit here, as it were. Ultimately, I liked the big open space. I also considered orienting it lengthwise, but again, I liked having a deep back wall. I think the side walls are gonna be fine with the splays. Uh, in terms of early reflections. I felt like it was a more awkward way to break up the room in terms of where I was gonna put instruments um, and things like that. So I think this uses my space in a little bit more of an efficient way and should not really have too many downsides that I can see. Now this is my signal flow chart. I have a custom made PC that uh, can pretty much handle whatever I throw at it and is easily upgradable in terms of storage or processing speed. Coming into there, I've got video capture with cameras, I've got computer control, keyboards. I am going to have MIDI control. In my original post for my homework for this, I have the keyboard I currently have, but here I'd like to maybe get like a Roland A88. It's a much nicer 88 key weighted um, MIDI controller. And then I've got a few microphones, none of which are very nice, so I'd like to upgrade those, but that's gonna be a uh, long process, I think, of researching and, and checking those out. Um, and then, of course, I've got direct uh, input instruments, guitars. All of those are gonna go into my interface. Right now, I just have a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, but after some research, I have my eye on the Apollo X8P. I'm going out, as I already mentioned, to a computer monitor, the Focal Trios, my Callies, and then I have a pair of ATH M50Xs uh, as my headphones. So there's a few other miscellaneous points. I hope to have an output desk, uh, which comes with cable management in the back. I'm gonna hopefully put my computer in this machine room over here and then be able to have tracks leading from the ISO booth with a little patch bay over here and from the live slash control room with a little patch bay right here and then uh, everything leading up to my connections up here. So that's, that's this little black channel here. I would like to have a button basically that I could push that says I'm recording and that lights up a little light. In terms of socializing, if we have that little suite upstairs, we could use that as kind of the hangout spot rather than needing to put a lot of hangout infrastructure into the studio itself. I'd like to put some lights on this um, soffit mounting wall in these splay areas here or around these acoustic panels, track lighting in the ceiling most likely. And then in terms of accessibility, I made my doors three and a half foot wide to get things in and out more easily. 
So I've got a glass door into the ISO booth. I don't need glass for the storage room. On the entrance door, I have a glass door as well. I've got a camera here modeled. I've got studio lights that I use already. And the idea is being able to shoot myself with my computer monitor and whatever in the background. I've got a futon here for chilling. You know, I would have guitars out on the floor. I would have an electronic or maybe a, an acoustic drum kit here. And the storage space should be large enough for me to fit all of these instruments fairly comfortably in addition to other things that I might want to store. I'll do section views of each of the walls of the main room. So here's looking towards the mixing position, looking towards the back wall, looking towards the left wall, here's looking towards the right wall. In 3D, it just looks a little something like this. I'll do a quick round tour here. You'll notice a space for outboard gear here, sort of a sidecar approach. And that should be about it. So thanks for joining me on this little tour and explanation of the Dream Studio. I've learned a ton in this class. I really appreciate everything I've learned from you, John, and Jonathan. Look forward to being able to use and apply this knowledge uh, to hopefully make some great music.